playing San Jose pretty notoriously, the one team in the league that adopts uh, man marking all over the field. Um, obviously, Almeida has a lot of high fitness demands, just uh, in a similar manner to you. Um, what are your impressions of them and what you have to do to, to get the win uh, on Saturday? Well, like you mentioned, it will be uh, a lot of 1v1 battles that we need to win. Um, it's a special game, not only because of the way they play, also because of the, the long trip we have. Uh, five or more hours in, in, in the plane and then the, the change of, uh, of time, uh, three hours less, you know, if I'm not, if I'm right. So it will be an adventure uh, and still three points in play. So 1v1 battles get to uh, realize that uh, you need to win those duels, that you need to get a lot of movement to become free on the field and at the same time uh, getting ready to defend uh, the moment we lose the ball. It's going to be a very physical game. But actually, after two two weekends in the MLS, I can realize and see that every game is is a physical game. If you see Atlanta, Philadelphia for the Concacaf champion, yeah, that was a very high intensity level over there, and probably two of the best teams in the league. So uh, that's the kind of fitness we need to achieve uh, if if we want to be competitive uh, this year. We'll go to Dave Johnson. Along the lines uh, uh, of, of Jason's question, uh, with, with San Jose and the way they play, uh, you know, how similar would you say it is to yours? Or, or uh, given that, uh, how much are you looking forward to, to playing them as, as opposed to last Saturday where there were so many fouls in the field where it seems like there would be more opportunity for open soccer on Saturday? Well, the moment you have a, a man mark uh, all over the place, is that means it, it won't be an open game. Uh, but uh, for, uh, fortunately, I already play against a team in Belgium who who tries to do the same. Um, that's OHL, uh, Leuven. Uh, they did the same thing on the midfield and on the back of the of their defense to really follow in a player all over the place and. I mean, it's, it's an interesting way of play and we need to try to find solutions and answers to that type of play. But uh, I, I, I expect a very physical game. I don't know how open it will be, um, but probably a game with many scoring chances for both teams due to the fact that the moment you win that 1v1 duel, and the field gets open and, and that means that someone else needs to jump in and, and someone else will be free at that moment. So um, it's going to be an interesting game and and I'm looking forward to to meet uh, Almeida and and their team. We'll go to Andy with the Washington Times. Hey, Aaron, uh, thanks for your time. Uh, with the return of Felipe Martins, first off, like, what does it mean for this team to get another guy back? I know you have so many injuries right now, but second off, how do you try to work him slowly into the into the team? You don't want to maybe throw him in the fire so soon after a big injury. Every player who can join the list of uh, fit players is, is welcome and I'm happy to have Felipe back with the team. Of course, like you mentioned, Felipe didn't play any single game for almost eight months. That's, that's quite a lot, so uh, that means he will need some time to, to be fully fit. Uh, the kind of fitness maybe you you can't train on on training sessions is the kind of fitness you need and you get only by playing minutes and by playing games so it will it will get some time like every injury long long term injury like the one he he had but very happy to have him back uh, with the group and it's a very positive uh, player uh, with a great mentality who will help us the coming months We'll take a few more questions. We'll go to Alonzo Contreras. Thank you, Zach. How are you, coach? I'm fine, are you? Good, coach. Coach, uh, you mentioned uh, 
after the game last weekend, the possession is the last statistic that you worry about it. Uh, I would like to ask you, what does the team have done better during training this week to create more chances against uh, San Jose? Thank you. Well, we were practicing a lot uh, how to to avoid that uh, suffocate mark uh, that San Jose will have on us. Uh, working on the final third, uh, working a lot in 1v1 duels. So, um, like I say, after the game last week and possession, I, uh, of course I want to have possession. When you have possession, it means you have the ball and you have control of the game, but it's also about what you do with that possession. Uh, so, if you're going to have the ball just to play lateral balls or or play constantly back to the goalkeeper. I rather prefer to have the ball to to play vertical and create scoring chances. And that wasn't the case for us, but it also wasn't the case for New England, a team who was uh, the team with the most scoring chances created uh, in 2020. And when you see the potential they have up front, yeah, you also have to mention how solid we were defensively the first two games this comp this season. Of course, we want to add more uh, danger up front and that will come with the time and the moment we're going to recover more offensive players that right now we are missing. Uh, but the defensive uh, solid work we showed the last two games is something that definitely we want to keep on doing. We'll take one more question. We'll go to John Rojas. Thanks, Zach. Um, Hernán, gracias por el tiempo. Una, una pregunta un poco más general eh, en la preparación del partido, no necesariamente este fin de semana, sino en general. Eh, ¿Qué tanto porcentaje de importancia tiene para ustedes el análisis del rival? ¿Y ese an ca porcentaje cambia cuando ya usted tiene tiempo de que sus jugadores tengan más conocimiento de implementar conceptos y los patrones eh, de juego? ¿Cambia eso ahora a cuando ya estén todos empapados del proceso? 70-30. 70 nuestros propios principios y nuestros propios conceptos y 30% el rival, no importa cuál sea el rival. Esa es la importancia que le damos a nuestro propio estilo de juego y a la forma de jugar del rival. Por supuesto mostrar a los jugadores siempre eh, cuando tenemos la pelota donde pueden aparecer los espacios dependiendo de con quién jugamos y con quién tenemos que tener cuidado cuando la perdemos. Eso es Eso es contra todos los rivales, sabiendo que nosotros no somos el rival más fuerte de esta liga. Así que, sin lugar a duda que tenemos que recibir información del rival, pero nunca dejando de lado nuestro propio estilo de juego. Así que para mí el equilibrio y el balance es siempre un 70% trabajar en nuestros principios y adaptarnos un 30% a cómo juega el rival. Hernán, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good day.